Okay, welcome back. Uh, for this video, number three, we are going to be creating the player character and getting them moving around and jumping and adjusting the control system so it's a little bit better for most players. So, following on, what you should have done already by now is create a new file, um, create the layers within that file and change the parallax uh, settings and then create a platform which you've put around your level uh, and given it the solid uh, behavior. So that's where we should be up to at the moment. So let's create our player character. So we're gonna make sure that we're on the right um, layer. So we need to be on the action layer again. Again, if we click on all these platforms, we should find that they are um, on the layer, uh, the, um, action layer okay so if you click on any of these you should see it says action layer there so make sure you're on the action layer double click to put in a new uh, sprite and we're going to call this sprite player square now the reason for that is in platform games it's really good practice to have a uh, player square and um, we add all the controls and the collisions to that square, but we don't replace the square when we come to put an image in, a graphical image. Instead, what we're gonna do is put a, a graphical image, create a new sprite and put that over the top of the square and pin it to the square, almost like we're giving the square a skin. And that's because if we try and do precise platforming controls and collisions uh, based on a sprite and the animation of that sprite, um, we introduce way more bugs than we need to do. So this is the way that a lot of platform games, 2D platforms especially, will program their platform games. They'll do it off a basic geometric shape like a square and then they'll put a skin over the top. Okay. Um, so, uh, call it play a square and then click insert. Oh, that name is already taken uh, and that's because I've already put that in there. So just bear with me a second. That was a mistake I did a little bit ago. Right, let's try that again. So double click in that. Let's call it Sprite. Uh, let's choose a Sprite, play a square. You will have already done this, so that's great. Click Insert. Okay, and then we have the little cross again. Click on the layout and that brings up the visual editor. And again, just give this a color. Make it a different color from the platforms. Don't make it difficult on yourself. And let's resize the player square because everything defaults to 250 by 250 pixels. And we don't want that. Uh, we are going to make our player 32 by 32. There we go. Uh, so click OK. And there you've got your player square. If we close that now, we should be able to position that on a platform. Now we need to make it move. And it's dead simple this in terms of initially making it move. All we're gonna do is with that selected, if we go over to the left hand side, go down to behaviors, which is here, and click on the blue uh, word, add a new behavior. And in our behaviors list, if we scroll to the bottom, we should see platform. And this basically allows us to put um, uh, a platforming behavior on. Now, whilst we're here, let me just show you another one you might want to consider. I'm not, we're not going to do it as part of this tutorial, um, but this one here, jump through, allows in platforming for you to jump through a platform from underneath. So as I say, we're not adding it here. If you want to add it, then please do. So at the, uh, without that, you won't be able to jump through a platform from underneath. You'll be, uh, you'll hit it because it's solid. But with the jump through attribute, you can do that. You'll land on it and you won't be able to fall through it, but you can jump through it from the bottom, which is how Mario games do it, of course. So let's put the platform uh, behavior on. And now if we um, test our game, we should be able to move around and jump. And as you can see, we can. Now at the moment, the only way you'll get be able to move the, um, the square around is by using the arrow keys. 
So left and right and up for jump. But this is obviously not ideal for most players. So we're going to adapt those controls now. But as you can see, it's not bad uh, in terms of the jumping around. If we just close that for a second, down the left hand side here, we have the max speed, acceleration, jump strength. So you can change all of these depending on what, uh, how fast you want them to go, how high you want them to jump. OK, and again, that's something if you just leave them at the default, then it'll jump the same as everybody else's. If you tweak them ever so slightly, they'll have a slightly different jump speed. OK, now um, changing these controls, then if we uh, scroll down here, uh, sorry, down uh, whilst our player square is still selected, we scroll down to the bottom of the properties. You'll see that this is tick box here um, for where is it? Slightly up default controls. And if you click on that, it tells you at the bottom there if enabled arrow keys control movement. Otherwise, use the simulate control action. So we're going to basically disable the default controls so they don't work anymore. Although you know, if you want to make your game playable for a left-handed person, you absolutely could um, leave those enabled. I'm going to disable them for now, though. And we're going to go to our event sheet. And this is where we're going to remap our controls. Now, we're, we're just going to make this game controllable from a keyboard for now. If you want to add a, joy, a joypad control, because in all honesty, most platform games, if not all platform games, should be played with a joypad, uh, then please do. I'm not going to add it as part of this tutorial, though. Uh, you've got the tutorials that we did for uh, the shooter mob, so you can refer back to that on how to uh, configure a controller. But to change the controls, so we're using w, uh, A, S, w, A, S, D. let's click Add Event. Um, now, before we do this, we've missed something out. And you might be screaming at your screen now, probably not. But, you know, tell me what I've missed out. In order to use the keyboard, we need to have the keyboard uh, highlighted here. So if we click Cancel and go to Layout and double click on our layout, we come down to keyboard uh, under the input and just insert that. And you'll need to do the same if you're going to put a joypad in, a gamepad in. So now we come back to the event sheet, click add event and keyboard. Click next. Now, um, this will work better if you use key is down. OK, if you use keys pressed, you're going to have to keep pressing it to move left or right, and it's going to be a bit awkward. Whilst you're holding down A or D, the uh, play square will move left or right. So key is down. Next. Let's do the left first. So um, all I did there was click to choose, and then you just press the A key on the keyboard and click OK. Click done. And we've got now when the A key on the keyboard is down, what will happen? So let's click add action. Let's click play a square because we want that thing to uh, something to happen to the play square. Click next. And then if we scroll down the list, you'll get to any behaviors that have been added. Here's the platform behavior. And we want to use, if you remember what he said, the simulate control. Click next. And if we're pressing A, which is going to move us left. So, yeah, we want that to be on the left. Click done. And there we go. So we have our first one. And if we quickly test that. And we press A. Yeah, we can move. We can't move right, but we can move left. And there he goes. So let's do that again for right. So add event. Keyboard. Next. Key is down, next, click on the key and then press D, click OK and click done. Now when the keyboard, uh, the D on the keyboard is held down, add action, play a square, next, scroll down until you get to the platforming behavior, click on simulate control, click next, and then change that to right. And now the player should move left or right. And there you go. Let's add 
the jump. So this time we're going to put jump on space. So add event, keyboard. Now this time we don't want uh, to hold the key down. We just want to press the key once and the jump. So let's press on key pressed. Next. Click on the button and then click the space bar. Click OK and click done. So now when the space bar is pressed, not is held down. And again, like we did before, play a square, scroll down, simulate control, next, and change that to jump. Okay, and if we press play there, we can, and I'm not as good at this because I am left handed, jump around our level. Now, the only thing you'll notice is that I'm limited to within the screen at the moment. I want the screen to follow me. So just before we finish this video, let's put the, the, another behavior on our player. Okay, so let's close that. Let's go back to our layout and click on our player square. Let's go to behaviors on the left hand side and let's add a new behavior. So we've already got the platform one on. Let's add new behavior and let's go to so scroll down until you get to general and scroll to. And you can see any one that you click, it tells you what it is just at the bottom there. So always center the view on this object or at the midpoint of multiple objects. So basically, as the square moves, the screen will scroll and keep the player in the middle of the screen. So click add. Um, and let's just test that. So we can close that. Let's test the game. So we've got our jump, we've got our left and right, and as we move down now, the screen scrolls. You can play with uh, the um, platform mechanics. There's a double jump you can add if you want them to double jump. But there you go, you have a platform game that you can make now just out of this square and platforms. And this really is all that Nintendo start with, with the Mario game. Um, certainly with the 2D games and once they'd perfected how it moved and uh, it felt good to move then they started wrapping levels around it. Okay if you haven't already done by now we need to save it. You should have saved it but if you haven't you can go to menu and I, if it, you're saving it for the first time I would do it this way otherwise you can just click the disc but go to menu go down to project and go to save as and cloud save. Make sure that you're in uh, your cloud saving area, so OneDrive, and you might need to log into your OneDrive, otherwise it will log you in like it's logged me in. I'm going to call this a uh, platformer one because I already have a platformer in there just so it doesn't mess that up and click save. And it'll tell you at the bottom here when it's saved. So there you go, it's saved. Otherwise, going forward, you can just cl uh, click the file button. Okay, that's the end of uh, video three. Video four, we will be going on to uh, discuss, let me just bring my list up here, um, adding background elements. So uh, and that'll be a nice short one. Uh, in fact, uh, Yes, um, we'll just do that quick last one. And that then, because we've done the scroll screen already, marks the end of this first set of instructions. And so if you've managed to get to the end of the next video, um, that's all uh, we expect you to do for the first set. And now you can have start having to play around with stuff. So join me for the last video uh, for this particular set of videos. Uh, and we'll just add a few background elements in.